When she returned, I made it clear that she needed to be honest. And when she finally decided to tell the truth, she told me how that it had been going on since October 2021. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story post. Guys, I'll put this up on the screen if you want to check it out. But you guys read the title. Let's just get into it. So, girlfriend of seven years cheating whilst getting our first home together. Oh, man. Oh, that sucks. Girlfriend of seven years was cheating on me whilst buying our first home together. Okay, here it goes. Me and my now ex-girlfriend were together for almost seven years. We were amazingly happy and looking forward to the future together, or so I thought. We bought and moved into our first home together in November 2021. Fast forward to January 2022, and I saw messages on her phone from a guy from work that she had claimed was just a friend. Uh, the way she was talking to him broke me. She was saying crap like how she loved him so much, how she couldn't wait to be the mother of his children, etc. Oh, I confronted her about these messages to which she stormed out of the house. When she returned, I made it clear that she needed to be honest. And when she finally decided to tell the truth, she told me how that it had been going on since October 2021. Even before we bought our first home together, she was telling me that she had fallen out of love with me and in love with someone else. It absolutely broke me as a person. I gave everything I had to this girl and she tossed me away like I was nothing. I don't think I'll ever understand why she continued to make a big financial commitment knowing she was doing this behind my back. So here we are now, two months on and I'm still struggling to come to terms with it. The first two weeks after were a struggle and I lost nearly 1.5 stones, as I couldn't eat due to constant pit of sickness in my stomach. I feel a bit better now, but I still have times when I'm down, and I can't free myself from the, from the shackles of this. My fear is that I will never love someone like her again, and mainly why did she have to break me like that? What they do, man. Let me give my thoughts. It sucks, man. Um, you guys were purchasing a home together. You know, most most people, most people, their biggest purchase in their life is their home. Most people. You know, it's like that's a big purchase, you know. Um, and she continued to have an affair while you were going through that process. She didn't care. She wanted her cake and she wanted to eat it too. What a piece of crap. Let's just go to the comments. Someone says, I guess she was still in the affair fog. That's why she still was committing to the investment. Okay. Have you been to the doctor for STD? Because she said it started in October 2021 and you never know. For me, possibly she will come back because the grass is not greener on the other side and you bet not let her back. And of course, the loss she will have if the house needs to be sold. Make sure you go see a financial lawyer to deal with the house and I would destroy her reputation and inform everyone in the family and friends. Good luck. Got tested a couple of days ago. I found out it was all clear, thankfully. I wouldn't take her back now. She has several chances to come clean. And for things to be fixed, and she chose neither. I'll get there eventually, but I'll be better off for it. Her parents were even more mad than I was when I told them. Wow. Eight years, about to get married? Same boat as you. D-Day, October 2021. Glad I found out before marrying. Getting an STD test now. You'll be all right. Be better for yourself. Someone said, it's an awful feeling, isn't it, my friend? How are you coping? Oh, this is OP. 
STD tests all, all STD tests all clear. I am trying now. What I'm trying now is to make myself a little better every day. Good for you, man. Good for OP. Good for OP. She continued with you because she wasn't sure he'd take her if she left. Maybe he's married or has another girlfriend. Or maybe she was afraid he'd bail on her, learning she expected a commitment from him. A lot of guys would. None of that matters. You will find another woman you love more than her. There is no doubt about it. You just have to be willing to be alone until it happens. And here's OP. He had a girlfriend I later found out. I have no idea what's happened between now and then, but I don't care. I'm starting to adjust to being alone. Just find, I just find it difficult sometimes. Salute to you, man. I wish you the best, man. You got this. You got this. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. I'll catch you guys at the next one. Psycho X co-worker, an unusual approach to stay safe. Breakup story. Hey, Drew. I'm 31 years old and male. Just want to get my story out. Since I think I got away luckier than some other subscribers here, I've been following your channel for a while now, and it helped me a lot with my last breakup. I think this might be an interesting one on how to deal with a psycho ex that can hurt your reputation. I also want to thank you for creating this platform where we can help each other and learn from one another. You're doing a great job and I applaud you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I'm a, thank you. Please keep my name anonymous as well as hers. I don't believe she will listen to your channel, but I just want to be careful. I feel you. Now, I am not a woman hater, but I do think that finding the right one is the challenge and that you don't meet a lot of the right ones throughout your life. Absolutely. Jordan Peterson estimates that you meet only about four good mates in your life. So I date casually. Left my simp years behind me though. Here's a story that still doesn't make sense to me though. So I have this coworker, female 25, and we've been working together for five years now. She doesn't look so good, even though she's young, but she was always nice and had a countryside. Girl next door vibe about her. Generally speaking, she's liked by most people in the office. In the first few years, she had a boyfriend and because we don't really work together, I didn't pay her much attention. Two years ago, however, she broke up with her boyfriend who I've met at office parties a few times. Nice guy. This summer, we had to work on a minor project together and stayed late two evenings to finish it on time. We flirted and for the first time, I started to notice her. I liked her, she was friendly, seemed to have the same values as I, and was just an all around good person, or so I thought. We hit it off and started dating. During that time, I discovered MGTOW and Red Pill on YouTube and started to make my mind about modern relationships, especially with her and I being coworkers and all I really thought about how we should approach this. Luckily, there's an end of the tunnel because next year on April, I'm starting a new job at another business, climbing the career ladder. So I understood that our little office romance was not that big of a deal since we would only be working together for a maximum amount of six months or so. That's why I even considered dating her. So we've been dating for six weeks now. This is where it gets twisted in ways that I couldn't imagine and still can't. She's asking me if we could be exclusive. And I hadn't even heard of that term. Exclusive is, she explains, when we only have sex with each other and not with other people. I agreed, was relieved that she wanted to move on into whatever it was that we had. Six days later, she stayed at my place and we talked during breakfast about our weekend plans. She tells me that she is going to a party at her hometown where some old friends will be. One of her best old friends is pregnant and she's looking forward to meet her. But also, she says, there is her ex-boyfriend whom I've met at these office parties. Mm -hmm. In my mind, I'm asking myself whether I should talk about him or not, but I decided against it because she and him were separated for two years, first of all. Secondly, she had suggested on her own terms that we would be exclusive. So I'm making a judgment call to not ask her about him. She don't want you sleeping with other people, but she wants to do what she wants. At the end of the day, I must add, before I move on, she seemed not at all like a person who would just cheat like that. No red flags, no controversial behaviors, nothing that I could spot. That would give me a reason to assume her to cheat on me. 
Also, she didn't have any connection with her ex-boyfriend at all. They ended on peaceful terms. He just happens to have the same friends as she at home, and so sometimes they would just have to see each other. Hmm. Again, that guy probably didn't know about her and I. As far as I can tell, he seems like a decent guy. Interesting enough, it had crossed my mind that I want to talk about us and this weird term exclusive. To me, being in an exclusive relationship is basically the same as being together. At least I can't really see a difference. I wanted us to be girlfriend and boyfriend, or at least say that we're dating. Exclusive just didn't cut it for me. So we meet for the first time after that party that I've already forgotten about. I didn't have the slightest worry about it at all. We met and I stay the night and we have sex. The next morning, we have sex again, like we used to. So I'm being more playful and starting to emotionally connect. It was after breakfast that I had the nerve to ask her about us and start a boyfriend-girlfriend suggestion. She replies that she's happy that I want that and she wants to be my girlfriend. But she also said that she wants honest relationships in her life and therefore she had to tell me one last thing before we move on as a couple. So she wants to tell me one last thing. She shifts into this girly position and tries to look extra cute and says something like, I've made a baddie. I reply, not at all expecting what I'm about to hear. What? She goes, I had sex with another man at that party. And if we we're going to be a couple, I want this to be out of the way. Wow. I made a baddie. I was in shock, feeling physical reactions to what I've just heard. I hear my body asking for me since I was in a tunnel vision with who? She goes, with the roommate of my ex-boyfriend. I've slept with that guy once before. Wow. And it was right there and then that it hit me. She wanted me to not have sex with other girls during this exclusive state because she knew that I had this girl on the side that I liked. She knows that girl and I were good friends and she wanted me to not F that girl, but she herself was totally fine having sex with other men. Told you. It was all about her, and if I would want to continue staying with her, I, I just had to suck that fact up. Also, I immediately understood that she didn't sleep with her ex-boyfriend's roommate, but of course, with the ex. She's not that good looking, and they've been together for a long time. I'm the guy she monkey branched with, even though they were broken up two years already. Her whole personality made sense to me. She always had this mask on being super friendly and nice, but in reality, she's very narcissistic. All the interactions in the office are making sense now. She doesn't have any girlfriends or lets anybody get close to her. When I was with her, she would always be so well behaved, so willing to give. It felt like she played a role instead of just being herself. I don't need to tell you guys that I left as fast as I could. I was somewhat heartbroken, but also felt threatened. I knew this psycho was gonna have some tricks up her sleeve, so the next shift where we would meet was a week later and she hands me a letter discreetly and leaves. I had blocked her on all social media and she didn't have my email address. I unblocked her on WhatsApp. I unblocked her on WhatsApp. Make a picture of how I ripped the letter apart and another one of how the pieces are in the trash. Starting out strong, be hurt. I said to myself, play the victim card, correct. It has to come off real or else she will lie around the office. I give those two pictures a title. Please don't try to contact me. I need to heal. I am deeply hurt. Then blocked her again. Now that brought me a few days until I got an email over my office email address. Oh, it was from her and was named work related. I knew that that's the biggest BS I've ever heard, but I read it carefully for traps or information. Now remember, I'm still hurting at that time for being betrayed. This was not easy at all. The email basically says some blah blah and then she says something like, can't we just meet like grown-ups and talk about it? <laughs> I went home and sat in my room looking at my white walls for hours, hurting, thinking, strategizing my next move. She was gonna leave me alone and if she feels the need to, she will spread lies about me. You as the reader can't really understand the little things that all of a sudden became aware to me. This, deser this deserves its own book. Even though she's not that smart, she can damage me easily and feel no shame or remorse about it. Oh, I know. I felt like the detective in The Usual Suspects. At the end of the movie, where he discovers that he got told nothing but lies, now he sees clearly. 
So I decided to make a one hour long video where I face tell how I'm hurt, how I thought better of us. I wouldn't cry during that video and use no names, not using a blameful tone, but repeating the message, I'm hurt. That part was true. I tell her how I can't trust her again and some more stuff, obviously. All some BS to make her believe that I'm some super simp that she has nothing to fear about. I rewatched that thing at least 10 times to make sure if she publishes it, that there are no bits in it, that any way, shape, or form can be used against me later on. I even tell her somewhat in the middle of the video that I would like her to not publish it. I just want to move on. Please let's have no contact if possible. I sat down and felt strongly about the video, so I send it. The next day I receive an email. Now that she has my personal email address, it's a 10 minute video of hers. So I watch it. And lo and behold, it contains evidence that I'm not guilty of anything. She admits to the betrayal. She blames it on herself, yada yada. I watched it a few times to make sure that I got what I need. And I can happily say that she took the bait. I'm not a threat to her and can finally start healing. Now the story is almost over, but a few things deserve to be mentioned. Firstly, her video is the absolute typical. I'm sorry for cheating, but, and it was totally my fault, but collection like in all your other guys' videos. It's almost funny at this point. She goes on, I will never do this again, etc. It's almost a cliche. Secondly, I'm still not over the fact she didn't have to ask me about being exclusive and literally seven days later she could have had sex with that guy no problem why put on herself the boundary to not have sex with others and then immediately have sex with someone else also i can't get over the fact that she's casually thought we would now start a relationship on that basis i don't even have words to respond to the to this audacity quite frank i'm still pissed two weeks ago and this is where the story ends so far Everything has worked out like I planned. Work is fine. No rumors are going on. I think she kept it as secret because she doesn't want to be called a hoe and needs the impression kept that she is the Miss Girl Next Door. Two weeks ago, she sends me an SMS in the middle of the night telling me she misses me and that she would like to start over. She adds a sad face emoji. I think about my reply for a second. I want to go, ha 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 ha, F you. But I reconsider and only reply, sorry, but I've moved on. Wish you the best. The only answer, sorry, I had a weak moment. And since then, everything is back to normal. Now, some might think she's not that psycho as I described her. But honestly, I'm not sure. It's in her behavior that I now see, though. When I see her interacting with others in the office, that tells me that something's up with her. I'm not a psychologist. Sometimes even a normal person gets, gets close enough to someone else to see a distinct behavior that doesn't add up. I'm safe, even if she lies now. I got the proof from her. Take care, you guys, and be careful out there. Some fish in the deep sea have glowing lights in the darkness with sharp teeth hitting nearby. Wow, let me give my thoughts. You know um you say you guys may think she's not as psycho as i say or whatever listen like i understand you taking precautions and that's what wouldn't men need to do like we've seen enough examples in the media just reading reddit stories reading subscriber emails we've seen enough to where you need to always look out for yourself so i'm not mad at what you did i mean me personally would i have thought to do all that i probably wouldn't have i wouldn't have sent a video or anything i just would have tried to move on and um like well i know what i did was right i know i didn't do anything wrong but it's not it's not a bad idea to to save yourself and what you did isn't totally you know uncalled for or unnecessary you know uh, i i respect what you did and like you said here's a different approach and you know of how you broke up with someone and, and things like that and you did it in a safe way because you work together and what a lot of people feel like you should not date people you work with here's the thing if you worked in an office in a firm wherever you work at it can it could be at a a plant or whatever people date each other a lot because you're around each other a lot and it's not even like seriously just dating you could just be smashing you know People smash each other a lot. It happens because you're just around each other a, a lot. Um, 
A lot of those women are married and they have work husbands. Some men are married and they smash other chicks there. It, it, it happens a lot, but you see the drama. If you've, you, I've seen a lot of drama in the office because someone was dating and they broke up and you know, we all would go to lunch together and it would just became really weird because these just two people in the group wanted to date and it didn't work out. Somebody cheated or whatever happened. It, it's, it's really not worth it, but I understand why it happens. But reading these stories, you see how it's, it could be a bad idea. You can cause a lot of trouble. You can lose your job. You can hurt your career. So you need to be very, very careful about dating at work. Man, I saw it like reading the, from the beginning of this story. When she said, hey, let's be exclusive. I'm going to this party. Man, I already knew what she was up to. She doesn't want you to smash anybody else. She wants to do whatever the heck she wants, but you aren't allowed to do it. Typical, man. Typical. Don't fall for that. Let's be ex exclusive. She's trying to use different terms, you know, uh, let's be exclusive and then you force her to break it down she's gonna tell you what you want to hear oh that means i don't sleep with anybody you don't sleep with anybody yeah right she had every intention to sleep with her ex and then try to lie oh i slept with my ex's roommate like it makes it better you cheated you cheated nonetheless wow this this chick is this chick is crazy she's a liar and I do get that narcissistic vibe from her. It's ridiculous. Again, man, I'm not mad at you for what you did. You, you're, you're trying to protect yourself. That's smart. You should want to protect yourself. So um, thanks for sending in this story. Like I said, like you said, peep, someone listening to this can learn from, from this story. Someone could be going through the same exact thing right now. The same exact thing. And your story may help them not get fired from their job because she may, she may go around and lie, spread lies about the person. So salute to you for saying, sending in this story. I really appreciate it. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. This story is going to be a little different from the other stories you've read so far. Since it will be much longer and more detailed, I've been cheated on as far as I know of. I've written this article right as the breakup happened and sent my ex a copy of it. She read it to her friends. It was very hurtful, but sadly true. I discovered the red pill idea about two years ago and since then I'm trying to become a better man, a better partner, but I'm still making mistakes. This story is not about a mistake I made, but a prime example what a 33 year old lady these days can look like. I think you should look into this. I leave it here for you to read. To your audience. I'm also not a red pill advocate. I just try to figure relationships out these days. Keep that in mind. This is the this is the letter she got. Today my girlfriend of six months and I broke up and I'm going to be honest about this relationship since it was not easy from the get-go. She's 33 and I'm 32 so I'm one of her youngest boyfriends she ever had. And that's fine with me as long as she shows me that she is a high quality woman. It took me two dates to understand she's bottom tier quality woman. She's single for all the right reasons. Number one, she's telling me all her ex-boyfriends were bad. Number two, she's telling me she slept with multiple married men over the last two years. Three, she's telling me she can't remember how many men she slept with. Four, she is a weed addict since she's been about 20. Uses daily more than one gram of weed. Number five, she's been to a clinic for mentally unstable people. Number six, she cheated in the past on one of her boyfriends. Number seven, she has been using antidepressants medication for the last eight years. Number eight, she didn't tell her therapist about her addiction and was diagnosed a narcissist by one of them. Number nine, she slept with a married coworker who later, would, who later wouldn't hire her for a project. She didn't think it was related to her sleeping with him. Number 10, she fell in love with one of the married men she slept with who had very young kids. 11, she was very egocentric and self-centered. 12, she was not caring about me and using her emotions to, man 
to manipulate me if I would let that happen. 13. She indicated on multiple occasions that in a marriage she can clearly see herself cheating and that's not a big deal to her. That list is just from the top of my head. Wow. Okay, yeah, your follow-up. What Your next line here is exactly what I was thinking, sir. Why in the world would you date her? <laughs> so, why date her? At the time we started dating, my sexual market value was at probably my lowest. Since I was just about to quit my low-level job to try to get a better one, to at least achieve a somewhat decent income. Basically, I was poor and almost broke. I'm skinny, but tall. My face looks the way it looks. It's okay, but it won't become an actor anytime soon. I'm smart, but have no higher degree, except some credits in physics. Almost made the degree, but not quite though. So yeah, I knew where I was at the time, when we started dating and understood that during that time, I was not a catch either. As a matter of fact, I would rate myself lower than a 5 on the SMV uh, sexual market value, typically from 1 to 10. Perhaps I would say I'm a 4, and that's just based on my looks. But other than that, I need money and a job to rank to a 6 or so. So I decided since we live close to each other, that it would be easy to date her. And I was right. She was really easy to convince to sleep with me and date me exclusively. I could see that she's in the phase where she wants to make kids and someone understands that her options are getting slimmer and slimmer. So she saw me for what I was from a low SMV standpoint of view, a potential catch. See, it's only six months later now, but I have managed to grab an awesome job away from, away from way more qualified people. Over psychology, I found the red pill, which answered me clearly, but dozens of books couldn't answer me. It told me why dating is so hard these days. It told me I need to grow and take responsibility for myself and my choices. Absolutely. That's why I quit my job, to, to have to find a better one. I had no backup plan. This was a high-risk situation, and any smart girl wouldn't have dated me during this time. But this chick saw my dedication and was willing to take a risk. I guess she thought that I was at the bottom. Therefore, I'm an absolute beta. But I wasn't. I was an alpha at the start of his career. I knew my place. I was honest about my SMV and started working and improving every day. That gave me enough attraction for her to invest in me. So the time we dated, I found, found out about all those 13 points. The first four I saw within a week. If I had met her today, I wouldn't have gotten into a relationship with her. That's her life story, by the way. The next 10 points took me not long to find out. She willingly tells me that she is crap testing me. I saw it. That's how obvious it was. Every decent man with some self-respect would have kept her a plate spinning. I was at a point where she had a good point wanting us to be, to be exclusive. I did at that time. I got cheated on a year before, which was one final push for me to dive into the realm of red pill. So when I dated this new girl, I was ready to leave any day, and today was that day. I feel like in a few days, I'll already go for my usual day and enjoy the freedoms that I now have. I was through the whole short relationship that was fairly tight, aware about how bad this girl is. When it comes to understanding men's emotions, we met four to five times a week with sleepovers since we live close to each other. In her mind, men are these bad people. We can cheat on them. They're liars anyway. Are supposed to cater to her feelings all the time. The list goes on endlessly. You know, a, a, a lot of them think that way. Honestly, a lot of I've I've met a lot of women who think, well, all men are cheated. All men are this way. So I'm gonna do me. I'm gonna I'm gonna do me and sneak around. Yeah, I've I've met a number of women who really who felt that way. Since I was aware about what I'm letting myself into, I could keep a safe emotional distance, whilst not being an a-hole to her. If she had shown me at any point during this time that she at least tries to better herself and sees that her poor life choices brought her into this place, then I might have actually opened up a little bit. But of course, she thinks the whole world is responsible for her being miserable, but not herself. She didn't take any responsibility, ever. When she was complaining about work, 
friends, ex-boyfriends, or her life situation. I was so glad that I started to read Red Pill material and listen to your channel at that point because she was such a textbook example of what millions of 30 to 35 year old women are today. Children. Some days I would almost play therapist and a great listener just to see how she can justify being so depressed without ever in the slightest suggesting she is the common denominator. I was astounded at her ability to rationalize how the others are the bad ones. Let me give you an example. She and I were on our first or perhaps third date walking around in the park. When she tells me that she lives in my city because her first boyfriend dumped her out here. So I was asking, how would that look like? And she responds something like this. This bastard was living near my hometown and I finished studying so I, so I was asking him where he would want to move since I had time to find a job at some different cities. We both wanted to move away from our hometown and I thought we would move to the same city. I wasn't even pressuring him to find an apartment together but he would be very slow and undecided as to which city he would want to move. Finally, after weeks of asking him, remember, at that time I thought he's, he's the love of my life. He gives me the name of the city, so I went ahead and applied for a job. I finally got a job here, moved here a little before he is supposed to follow, but he never showed up. That's how I ended up here. I got dumped by him. What an a-hole. At that time, when I was walking next to her, I felt sorry for her. Her first love dumped her in this city, where she was alone, and she tells me he really didn't give her much of a reason as to why he didn't follow. I hated that guy. The reality, if that would have been the whole truth, this story would have been awful, and what happened to her would have made me hate the guy. Even if he was young, how could he do something like this to her? But she skipped a little, a colossal fact in that story, that I would find out weeks later at another park. She might have thought that I forgot about the a-hole at, at that point and would not connect the dots, but I did. When I would ask the follow-up question, if that's the same guy, she would agree and not even hide it. That's how little self-awareness this woman had. Yeah, most liars do that. Most liars eventually tell on themselves. This is what happened half a year before her ex's neglect and not following his girlfriend to her city. She went on a holiday trip with her friends for a few weeks, or perhaps months. I can precisely remember and wanted him to come. He didn't, so she cheated on him. Then she flew home and told him and wanted his forgiveness. Remember guys, the guy was early 20s. He thought this was the one. He probably didn't come because she was half a globe away. I hadn't mentioned that, sorry. And the flight was perhaps expensive or for what, or for other reasons. But as soon as he doesn't come as she calls her puppy out, she sees a great opportunity to F another dude. She enjoyed it. Not the sex, but the fact that her boyfriend has to forgive her. Little did she know, since she's an idiot, that he was heartbroken. She told me he didn't want to know anything during the last months about the cheating. She wanted to talk about it, but he didn't want to. Finally, when she was away, this young man had gathered the strength to leave her. He left her behind in her new city, just like she left him behind during her summer holiday. As she later told me this, she still couldn't see the connection of why he might have not followed her to that city. She still had no empathy for him being so broken that he didn't even have the strength to leave her right away. She looked me dead in my eye and said, yeah, he forgave me, of course. I've talked to her about this story time and time again, trying to find out more about this, about how she is blinded by her narcissism, about how her poor boyfriend must have felt. I'm not kidding. You guys, she saw nothing wrong with her cheating. She was calling him out for being a bad man for not following her and leaving her. He forgave me. You don't understand. One result, she takes drugs every day for the last 10 or more years and surprisingly falls into a huge depression. She gets professional help but doesn't talk about her drug abuse. So the doctors can't help her since she's not being honest. Therefore, they give her strong antidepressants. She has two more boyfriends, one while she is still young, who seems to be the one who alpha whittled her. He banged her for some two or three years and dumped her as soon as he understood what he's letting himself into. Another one who was late 30s when she was in her early 30s, who seems to be a total loser. 
He has financial problems, doesn't aspire greatness, is a total douche and overall crappy. And she started getting a taste for married men at about 31, starts rationalizing that it's okay to do that. Remember, at the time, she must have had 50 guys during her lonely years. She was super depressed and hardcore addicted to medication, weed, and wasn't getting any younger. Her options are running thin. Of course, she falls in love with the married guy, Christian. She told me the guy's name and was still here and they're texting with him. I never wanted to talk about him, but he was the reason why I never emotionally clicked with her. I didn't even like the sex with her. I could smell her still loving him. I ma it made me sick. I oftentimes didn't get it up. Any healthy woman would have perhaps slept with Christian, but eventually dropped him out of her life. He was not going to leave his wife for her. She was his mistress and fine with it. And when she decided to keep him as a friend, backup, he agreed. Of course he did. She's still his side piece, who he can F whenever she's at rock bottom. He's so bad for her. She can't even comprehend that. So I chose to let that slide as long as I was sure she's not sleeping with him. I never was, but that's why I could easily break up. I let her keep him also because I'm not responsible for her. She's responsible alone for where she is right now. Single again, lost man who aspires greatness and has a job to show, show for as proof. Christian and the drugs are what is keeping her from having a fulfilled relationship at this point. But she can't see, but she can't see that, no matter how I would tell her. What happened for us to break up? This one is kind of easy. I had my first week at the job, and for the first time in our relationship, I needed a recovery weekend. So for the first time, it was not all about her, but I needed my strength to regrow. The whole Sunday morning, I had to endure her being off weed for two days in a total state of withdrawal symptoms, like anger and concentration loss. It had run out, and she, she couldn't meet her dealer until next week. She booked train tickets for her to ride home, since her mother had her... 60th birthday she invited me to come at one point but i refused since i was not going to date this woman until she takes responsibility she needed 90 minutes to book the tickets called her dad in anger and couldn't focus for a second i had to sit there for 90 minutes waiting to even be seen by her but of course that's only where the fun begins on my bicycle ride home i got some phone calls which i had to ignore to take care of myself instead of her as I was at home, I prepared some work for the next day and didn't look at my phone for a while. When I checked a little later, I saw her messaging me the most mean things anybody has ever said to me. She went so far attacks that I couldn't believe how true the red pill in her case is. She's a prime example of a true narcissist. It hurt though, a lot, I'm not gonna lie. What I've read was so mean that I wanted an apology. I thought that humans who say much mean things are supposed to apologize, but not women. These angels never make mistakes. For True Story Nation, perhaps this can help some of you guys. For me, it helps getting feedback in the comment section. On my last shared story, many guys helped me get over the infidelity and made sure I'm fine. This time I'm fine, but still, having people to share this with helps me better in the next relationship when that time comes. Have a good day, and remember, if your partner has red flags, that's not a reason to immediately quit. You might have some red flags too, but if you have a problem with a certain red flag, you have an absolute right to stand up for yourself and call her out on it. Wow, let me give my thoughts. Man, like I said, um, when, when you were going through that list, those points, red flags about her, I immediately, I immediately thought like, okay, why is he dealing with her? And you followed it up with, okay, so you're want, you want to know why I dated her? Let me tell you why. Okay, you know, so you you said, uh, you know, you felt bad about yourself. You didn't feel like you were doing well in life. Uh, you wanted a better career. Uh, you you were saying things about your looks and things like that. Listen, man, because you even mentioned that sex with her, you didn't even enjoy it. You know, she was playing all these games. I wouldn't even entertain her. You got this position to, to make more money and there's a potential for you to make even more money later on if you do a good job um, is what I got out of it. Um, I would be solely focused on that, you know, and, and other things that 
that that that that involves me now i can completely understand if you're saying like well you know i didn't really want anything serious with her i just wanted her around you know for you know to get it in but you said you didn't really like that so i just needed her around for a conversation or i don't know what it was because when you try to lean on her when you needed support or you needed to recover in that one por- in, the, in one portion of the story where you needed to recover on the weekend and get your strength back and things like that she wasn't there for you i just didn't, i didn't really see the point of her being in your life at all it was just she's a total waste you know um hopefully lesson learned man hopefully don't if there's any red flags walk away just walk away it's not worth it you have way too many important things to worry about anyway you said you need to get your money together and get a better job and focus on your work that should be all you're worried about right now that should be the major thing not her who cares what she's going through what she She's not there for you. She's not helping you out. She'd rather talk to a coworker than be there for you. You're wasting your, you wasted a lot of time. One thing you can never get back is time. 